God is a, not a man, we determined last week through the scriptures, that he is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. And then we said that, um, you know, that let God be true and every other man a liar. We said that believing is of the heart. It's not of the mind. We said it's of the heart. With man, with the heart, man believeth, and with the mouth, confession is made. So we began to talk about that last week. And then out of Psalm 119, 89, it says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And so we know that the word of God has been settled in heaven. Everything that happens, happens first in the spiritual realm, and then is manifested in the natural. So we, we, we know that as spirit-filled believers. We know that we are spirit. God is a spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit. The, the word is spirit and life. And, and we said that angels are spirits and, and the devil is a spirit. So we live in a physical world. But the Bible says that, you know, that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation that's been called forth out of darkness into the marvelous light. And so we have to stand on God's word and know that we're just actually ambassadors here. We're, uh, you know, people in a foreign land, really, you know, because our, our home is heaven. Amen. And so we just need to know that God has done all of this for us. We be a spirit filled people. Amen. And so then we said that last week, uh, we needed to realize that when we declare God's word, it is a choice, you know, whether we're going to declare God's word or continue to speak words of fear. It's either faith-filled words or fear-filled words, amen? And so we chose to speak God's word because we know that God's word is spirit and life. And we said it is your choice to be bold enough to endorse it. When, when you declare the word, you're endorsing the word. The Bible said, how can two walk together except they agree? Amos 3 and 3. So we're choosing to agree with the word of God. So we dare to believe every promise and every word God says about us. Hallelujah through Jesus Christ. And that's why it's so important to know the word so that you can confess the word in times of trouble. Amen. But we're going to go on today. We wanted to uh, get back to that part right there because we're still talking about making the right choices in 2022. We said, first of all, you needed to be a believer. The Bible says that Jesus said, uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And then we said that you needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that hovers over the word and brings it to pass in your life. And he is the revealer of the word, which is the truth. Amen. So we, we're talking today about how to build a strong spirit, how to build a strong spirit. And um, I'm trying to I'm trying to finally follow the leading of the Holy Spirit on how to tap into, you know, what comes next, Lord, which what do you want me to say next on, you know, on these lessons. But this is what I want you to understand that nothing in the kingdom or the promises found in the Bible are automatic. So, you know, we have a responsibility, even though God has done already done everything and he's working his way from the end to the beginning, you know, because it's already been established. And, you know, the Bible says that he's already formed us and made us before we were even, you know, in our parents' home. And so, you know, the, the requirement is faith in the heart of a belief. See, it's not automatic. It's faith in the heart. And then I have to confess something. And then I have to do something, you know, because if I'm not a doer of that word, then I'm deceiving myself. And we'll, we'll look at all of that a little bit later. But in Psalms 24, 7 through 9, it says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be you lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. That the king of glory, hallelujah, he's going to come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He's strong and mighty. This is where we get our strength from. The Bible says that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is the word made flesh. So when you see Lord in the scriptures, you can, you can interchange that with the word. So the Bible says the word strong and mighty, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. 
Right. See, when when we're in a place to where um, you know we're not allowing our spirit man to have the ascendancy, because remember we're a spirit being. We're born just like you know after the image of God, mm -hmm. and so the spirit man has to become stronger than his flesh. I want to give you an example, and I know that we've talked about these examples uh, maybe one once or twice before. But we gave you an example of when we were coming from Ohio and we were coming into um, to Texas, mm -hmm. and it you know and it was snowing so bad and the, it yeah. was just filled with ice and snow and all of that. And uh, what happened was that we had we were pulling a van because I, when I was coming back with the kids, my van broke down, uh -oh. and so you know I had never had any problems with that before. But my van ended up breaking down, and so I had to call, you know, Reggie to come and meet me halfway because, I, you know, I, I kind of, I think it was like in Kentucky or something that it broke down. And so, you know, I'm still trying to get to Alabama. And so, anyway, so it was uh, the van, they came and got me, and so it was him and his two cousins, and they brought their van, which was just like ours, a custom van. And so they were pulling the van you know, our van that had broken down and we were all in the other van. Mm -hmm. And so we're we're coming down this hill in Tennessee. And so we're seeing cars on each side with the, you know, the wheels rolling and all that. And so, um, you know, we, we're like seeing just pure ice. And so we're like, you know, I, I didn't even realize it because I was like dozing off. And so then when I heard, you know, somebody mentioned something up in the, the driver's seat or whatever. And so then we, everybody just said, started saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And we started saying, in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, the, the van, this, what happened was the van that was coming around from the top side was coming up to the front side. And so had that had happened, we would have all fallen over and fallen into a ditch and all of that. But as a result of that, we ended up saying, you know, we, when we said name of Jesus, everything just, and it, it got back in line, and we were able to go down them hills and go and get back to our destination. But what I'm saying is, is that this is what happens in the spirit realm. You have a natural body, but you are a spirit being. The Bible says we are spirit, we have a body. I mean, we live in this physical body and we possess a soul, which is our mind, will, imaginations, and emotions. So if the body is trying to take over, just like that van was trying to come around and we could have all, you know, had destruction, but the body has to line up with the spirit. If the body does not line up with the spirit, this flesh is going to do exactly what it wants to do, even though it's been born, even though you know, you've given your life to the Lord and you are born again, you have to train your spirit to become stronger than your flesh and your emotions, your mind, your will, and all of that. And so, um, you know, it's like vital that this happens because otherwise this body is going to continue to do what it used to do. But when you take the word of God and you begin to put this word in your heart, then the Bible says that this spirit man begins to get strengthened and it's the same way when you go and you go to the gym and if you don't work out those muscles guess what those muscles will become limp limp you know limp and and not functioning the way that it's supposed to function now god already did his part okay he he created you the way you know that you were supposed to be created but it's up to you to maintain now to maintain, get in there and work out and, you know, condition your spirit, condition your mind by renewing it with the word of God is up to you to begin to build up your spirit man. Because we have an immune, uh, uh, the spirit man has an immune system also. It's like immune to the, to the word of God. This, the word of God is spiritual food for our spirit. So let's look at a couple of more just real quickly so I can show you about the strength and then we'll go on to talk about the word. Now, last week we said God cannot lie because he's the truth. The Bible says that he, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Not a way, not a truth, not a life, 
because that means there could be many lives, but he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so the Bible says that, you know, God's word is true. So let's look at something here. It says in Psalm 27 and 1, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He is my light, meaning that, you know, he, he, he lightens and, and my spirit man is the candle of the Lord. And so it says, and my salvation, my deliverance, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? You know, because the Bible says so clearly that if God be with you, who can be against you? Can't nobody be against you. They may try to rise against you. That's why it says no weapon formed against you. It may be formed, but it will not prosper. Because if God is with you, then nobody can really, you know, take you out. The enemy, we know he's present and he's the, you know, the little God of this world and things. But the Bible tells us very clearly that, you know, Jesus is Lord and he is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's go to uh, Matthew 4 for just a second. Now we're talking about if you're going to build up your spirit, man, so that your spirit is strong and begin to take over, you know, this, this flesh, you know, just, just imagine. Um, if you didn't eat for, you know, maybe three or four weeks, nothing, and just had water, you would be very, I don't even know if you would really be much alive, but if all you had was water, you probably could survive a little while. I didn't do any, uh, you know, I didn't research that. But if you didn't have any food and you just were trying to remember, I remember how a steak used to take, <laughs> you know, but you're not. You're, you're thinking about it, but you don't, you're not putting it in you. And so you cannot rely on trying to remember what the word says. You have to go to the word and put it before your eyes and put it in your ears and put it in your heart. So let's look at Matthew 4, and I'm going to read it out of the Jewish Bible. And then, Ms. Shalani, you can read it out of the uh, regular Bible. But it says in Matthew 4 and 1, then the Spirit led Yeshua. Jesus up into the wilderness to be tempted by the adversary. Now it's not God just tempting him, but it is he led him there to be tempted of the adversary. After Yeshua had fasted 40 days and nights, he was hungry. Mm -hmm. Oh, there go our answer right there. But anyway, he was hungry. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, order these stones to become bread. But he answered, the word says, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of Adonai, which is God. Okay, you want to read your version? Okay. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Okay. And when he said fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Now when the temper came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that the, what, the, this bread th this bread becomes bread. Stones become bread. But he asked man said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. So there's Amen. our answer right next there. You, the physical body needs food. Bread, right to bread. But the spirit man needs spiritual food, right. which is spiritual bread, which came down from heaven. The bread of life that came down from heaven was Jesus. Jesus was the bread, was the bread of life, and he came down from heaven. And so we that's what we put in our mouth. We put it digest it and get it in our heart. You know, and then you can bring it back up like a like a cow does the the cud and chews and it goes up and then he and it ruminates like and goes up and down and he chews it and gets all the nourishments out of there. Yes, You're yes. putting that word in your heart so that you would not sin against God. Amen. Yes. So this is how the believer is supposed to live. We said physical man is sustained by food, but the spiritual man is sustained by spiritual food which is the word of God. And so, you know, that's one thing that we have to remember. Now, even in that same chat, uh, in that same part, I want you to look at, we know that, um, you know, whenever you're tempted, 
because we know that when you're in a state, whether it be you're fasting, you know, or whatever, or you're just not getting into the word and you're a believer. This is showing us also, when you look at it, it has a spiritual connotation to it that, you know, when you're in a position to where you're not feeding yourself the word of God, you become spiritually weak. You know, this is our food. This is what sustains us. You know, the Bible says that God's word is spirit and life. And we'll, we'll go there in a few minutes. But I want you to look at, even in, um, when you look at that, and, and the Bible says, and then the tempter came, the Bible says, for every temptation, there's a way of escape. What's your way of escape? The word. Every time the enemy comes to try to bring anything on you, remember last week we said that all, uh, all fear is rooted in deception. Most of the time, it's not even true. It's the enemy is trying to deceive you, whether he said, um, I, you might have cancer, mm. you know, and, and then you're, you're thinking, you know, man, I might have cancer, you know, and then you go to the doctor and no, I can't find anything, but now he done planted that seed in you and it's deception. And that's what I'm saying is a lot of the things that we go through are not even really true. But we have to know the truth by getting into the word of God so that it would sustain us. So Satan's MO, his modus of operation is, is to steal, to kill, kill and to destroy. Strong. That's a, a John 10 and 10. But I have come, the word has come, that you might have life and have it abundantly. God, remember we talked about in the garden that God didn't even want us to know evil. He only wanted us to know good. And so the way that we, you know, can maintain a good and successful and blessed life is if we start getting into the word and allowing the word to make us successful, to make us prosperous, that we would have good success. The Bible says that the word is even health and medicine to our flesh. Right. You know, so when we're putting the word in our mouth, it's just like you taking that, that pill every day, you know, that's supposed to be helping you. This is more powerful by confessing what God says over yourself. Because if you believe it really in your heart, like we talked about last week, and speak it out of your mouth, it's going to come to pass. Right. Hallelujah. So one of the main reasons Satan comes to steal is to steal the word of God from us. And, you know, we, we already know that if you look at... Um, I think it's in Mark. Yeah, Mark. Go, let's go to Mark 14. 414. Four, mm -hmm. Mark 414. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so um, Mark 414 says, it is right here. The sower sows the word. Mm -hmm. So the sower sows the word. These are those beside the path where the word is sown. But when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word which was sown in their heart. I'm just going to stop right there. So, you are, you, the, you know, the, the sower sows the word, whether it be your, your pastor or someone else, you know, speaking the word to you, and you receive it in your heart. And it says, immediately. Satan is coming to steal that word because he knows that, you know, that's what he came to do to Jesus. Remember, he tried to get him when he was a baby in the manger. He wanted to steal the word so that, you know, that the, the, he thought that he could stop Jesus from coming and dying for our sins and all of that. He knew that something was up. But I'm telling you, this is what he does. He comes immediately before you can even get out of the church. You know, somebody calls with a bad message or something. You don't know. I forgot all about the word. And so God, he wants us to understand that that's why the enemy is coming to steal the word of God from you. Because he, if, you, if he can steal the word of God from you, he knows you have no power. See, this is the, the, the food, the word of God is what uh, strengthens us. And brings us, you know, the things that we have need of, whether it's prosperity or, you know, healing or just having a good quality of life. You know, everything in the scriptures has been already um, allocated for us. Amen. And so we said um, our job is to continue to speak God's word, you know, and that's what Jesus did in, in Matthew 4. He didn't just stop at one thing. The enemy came again. And that should show us that 
Just because you speak the word one time does not mean that the enemy is going to flee. He knows the word too. And you see by how he kept quoting it to Jesus. You know, he said, you know, it always says what the word says, but then uh, Jesus comes back and he, you know, puts the word on, on him again, you know. And so what I'm saying is, is that just because you speak the word one time, don't assume that he's going to flee. The Bible says, you know, we continually keep putting the word in us and we just keep speaking it out. Every time he comes, we got the word back on him, you know. And um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people that are doing that now. And I say, it just blesses my heart because so many people, you know, that I know, you know, maybe at one point they weren't, you know, doing this and they, you know, just wasn't seeing the manifestation. But now I'm seeing, you know, getting texts from people that I know that, oh, I did this and the Lord did this, you know. And it's just exciting to see because that's what God wanted. He only wants good for us. He doesn't want us to go through all of the struggles, stress, and, and strife and all of that. Amen? Yeah. All right. So we said that he comes immediately to steal the word. Now, just like you can't live on, we said, on from trying to remember the word, you have to go back and read it because revelation, reading brings revelation. When I when I read the word, the, you know, I'm getting revelation. I don't know how many times that I could, you know, sit near the window and in my dining room and begin to read the word. And I'm just seeing, it's almost like I'm just honestly in a different place, hmm. you know, spiritually, because it's like the word becomes alive. The Bible says that the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the dividing of the soul, the spirit. You know, this got to be the, the, the thing that um, takes over this because we always think in, you know, the negative in our mind. So this has to, that's why there's, he, he brought the sword to separate, you know. The, so let's, uh, I think that might be in Hebrews 4. Let's, let's look there. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hallelujah. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. So we cannot just continually think just because I spoke the word one time, it didn't work, you know. And it's the same way when you're giving or whatever. You know, but I did this once and, and thinking that, you know, you got to allow the seed the seed, the Bible says the sower sows the seed. You got to allow that seed to get down in the ground and, and, and you know, get rooted down there so that when, and that's what the parable is about, is that, you know, that, you know, when the enemy comes, that, you know, and the storms of life come, that you're just not, you know, not, a, you're not on a firm foundation. Hallelujah. Was that correct, 412 or not? Yeah. Oh, uh, you want me to read it? Yeah. For the word of God is living and powerful. Woo! And okay, yes. okay, living. Mm -hmm. It's a living word. When you when you receive the word in your, you know, mm -hmm. when you receive Jesus in your heart, you became a new creature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Sharper than any two-legged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow, and in the center of the thoughts and intent in your heart. Hallelujah. So, mm -hmm. even every heart intent, mm -hmm. God knows it. You know, it's nothing that's hidden from Him. And so, that's why, you know, it, it should be like we want so, you know, to be right and right standing with God, you know, because He knows our thoughts, the power of right. He knows our intent. You know, you can say something, and it's just kind of like, you know, how people say, oh, that. That's shade. I don't know. Really, I've heard that. You know, oh, they, you know, they, they, they that's shade in them. You know, or whatever. But see, there's an intent behind that. You know, and so God knows our thoughts. He knows the intent of the heart, and we want our heart to be pure before Him. Amen. And so let's look over in. Um, we got to make this the the word the the spiritual food. Uh, to dominate our spirit so that our spirit becomes the dominant thing of our flesh and mind. Your mind will have, see ungodly images, have ungodly thoughts, you know, um, you know, it, it'll traffic you and drive you to do things that you really don't want to do. And it's not, you know, this is for no condemnation to nobody because we all go through this stuff. 
But this is what the enemy is trying to do, get you so far off of the word and into a place to where he can make you feel condemnation and shame. But guess what? Look over in uh, Romans 8. And that's his intent to get us off of what, you know, God is saying and feeling like this, this stuff ain't working and what have you. But anyway, in Romans 8, um, I'm sorry, I'm in Romans 1, Romans 8 and 1, it talks about, therefore now there is no condemnation, am I in the right place? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are walking not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. So we have been set free from the law of sin and death. But now, because we're in this body and we're in this world where Satan is the little God of this world, his lease is not up. Second Corinthians 4 and 4. He's still the little God of this world. So a lot of times there's a lot of things going on around us to try to get us into that place to where we're not believing God and trusting God and doing the things that he's called us to do. But it says, therefore, now there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh. So we want our spirit man to be the dominant force in our lives to, to begin to, um, you know, get us to our destination and to, to bring in the things that um, you know, God wants us to have. The Bible says that the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But when I allow the word of God to be the dominant thing in my life, the Bible says that even the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter day by day. You know, I'll begin to see, you know, the way that he wants me to go because my path is getting brighter and brighter day by day. And so that's a, um, an awesome thing. But let's look over right now in Romans 8 and 6. And the way that it's reading is the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. And so who came to bring us life? Who came to bring us Jesus? Yes. Jesus came to bring us life, and he wanted us to have peace, and he wanted us to have the abundant life. And so he's telling us here, if, you, if your mind is governed by the flesh, mm -hmm. it's death. But if, if, but if it's governed by the spirit, it's life and peace. And so in John 6, 63, it also says, it is the spirit who gives life. The spirit gives life. The spirit gives life. The word is spirit and life, and it says, he is the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefit, and that's John 6, 63. The flesh conveys no benefit. Whatever there is and no profit in it, the word is truth that I have been speaking to you. They are spirit and life. And so he's telling us that, you know, the, this flesh, it doesn't have any really any benefit. The, the, when you allow the spirit of life, which is Christ Jesus, to come on on the inside of you, and you begin to fill your heart with the spiritual food, which is the word, and allow God to begin to, you know, build um, out of your spirit, man, the word of God, then this, this spirit is going to come much more dominant than the flesh. Amen? And so when we look at, uh, even in John 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning before all time was the word, Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. And it says, in John 1 and 1. And so then it says, and he was present originally with God, talking about Jesus, the word. All things were made and came into existence through him. So the word is so powerful. It wasn't nothing made except it was made by Jesus, the word. And so that's why we have to have this word in our spirit beginning to cultivate, you know, the kingdom on the inside of us to where these things can be manifested. The things that we're believing God for, the, the things that we've been praying about and all of that. And it talks about, um, and then it says, all things were made and came into existence through him. So you, being a creative spirit, just like God created all things, you have a, you have a creative spirit. And you are putting the word in you, which is going to produce in you 
And that's what Jesus, I mean, that's what God wanted. He wanted, in, in Genesis, he said, refill the whole, I mean, you know, replenish the earth, you know, uh, expand, increase. He, that's what God wants. It's our king, the, the Bible says the kingdom of God is on the inside of us. And so he wanted that to expand and to be, uh, you know, like a, a fruitful garden that anything that we would need, when you got the word in you and you're really believing God, remember we said last week we had to believe with our heart. And so when this word is getting down in there, it's beginning to uh, manifest things out of our spirit, man. And when we begin to see them in the natural, everything was first spiritual and then it's going to be natural. And so then we said, and without him was not one thing made that is coming to be. In him was life, in Jesus, and the life was the light of men. And we said that that light was the candle of the Lord. And it says, and the light shines on in darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it. See, the only way that your, uh, your, your flesh, uh, you know, can um, dominate your spirit is if you allow it to. You know, by not ever putting any spiritual food in there. Oh. And then this this gets stronger, you know. I don't feel like going to no church. I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like walking in love with her. You know, I'm not, you know, everything is going to be a darkened state, you know. But when you're trusting in God, yeah, that's it. But when you're trusting in God, it becomes light. You know, the word is light. And that's what it's saying. And the light shines in the darkness. Um, I was telling somebody this week that, you know, because when we did the lesson on, you know, when people are thankful, then it begins, God really takes notice of that. And I'll, I'll show you a scripture later. But, but it talks about when you're not thankful, that's what happened to the people in the children of Israel. They, their hearts became darkened. See, when you're not thankful, your heart becomes darkened. Every day, thank the Lord, merely for the fact that you woke up. Every day, thank the Lord, you know, that you're in, 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 able to, you know, fix your own food and walk around and stuff. I'm telling you, thankfulness brings, you know, it's like a garden also, you know, because that's what God wanted. The reason why, most of the reason why he did not allow the children of Israel to enter in, because they murmured and complained and their heart became darkened because of unthankfulness. And a lot of times, you know, we're so busy looking at what we don't have, we forget what we have. God always wanted us to be thankful and, and, and to give him the praise and the glory for everything. Amen? Okay. And so anyway, so it says, for the darkness has never overpowered the light. It put out, it put it out and observed, absorbed it or appropriated it and it is unreceptive to it. So then go down to uh, 14. We're still in John 1. Mine is probably reading a little bit different but um, has the same thing. So John 1 and 14. And it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. The glory is only the son of God, the father, uh, full of grace and truth. And so that's what we need to remember that God, he is, you know, the, the Bible says that it's like the word came down and tabernacled around us. Hallelujah. So he tabernacled around us and we began to see him. The Bible says, if you look at John, 1 John 3 and 8, we talk about this all the time. But for this purpose, was the Son of God manifest? Everything that Jesus did, he was an example to us that, you know, this is what you can do. Because he wasn't just God, he was a God man. He was um, humanity wrapped, I mean, divinity wrapped in humanity, you know, divinity wrapped in humanity. So just as he is a God, was a God man on the earth, he's not now. But as he was on the earth, he came to show us what man could do with God inside him. And so you are a God man. I'm a God man. And you're a God man. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us very clearly that we can make choices, but we cannot make them. Uh, choose the consequences. So a person can either be carnally minded or spiritually minded, but the flesh 
leads carnally minded people while the spirit of God leads spiritually minded people. And we need to be led of the Lord. Amen. We're getting ready to come to a close real quickly, but I wanted to uh, put this one couple of things in here. We have to be intentional about putting the word of God in us. God has provided everything for us, but we have to be doers of the word. Let's look over in James uh, real quickly. And I believe it's in, Let's go to James 3. I did not write this down, so check me on it. Uh, Maybe it's one. Okay, yes, one. James one, and we'll look at. Um, we'll start up at verse uh, two. It says, "My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, which Jesus did, knowing that your the trying of your faith it develops patience. But let patience perfect its work, that you may be perfect, meaning mature and complete." Lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and without criticism, and it will be given to him. So he's not going to criticize you if you ask for wisdom. But the Bible does say in, uh, I think it's in 1 Corinthians 1.30, that um, it, it, it talks about uh, Jesus has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification. But just say like there's an area that you're not sure on. Go to God. Ask him, you know. And the, even though he is the word and all of that is in the word somewhere, but if you don't know where it's at, go to God and ask him, and he will not criticize you. Says, but but let him ask in faith, believing with, without wavering. For he, what, he who wavers is like a wave of the sea, and he's driven and tossed with the wind. That means you're going back and forth. You know, you're tossed with the wind. Let not that man think that he will receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So we, we talked about being double-minded. It was like having two out of the word. The D-O-U in double is duo, meaning having two minds. So you're wavering back and forth. And that happened to me a couple of weeks ago because um, I was, you know, I, I came off the job. I heard the Lord tell me to do that. And so to get in his word and pray and do all that, you know, so then I'm, I'm so you because I've been working all my life. I was going back and forth whether or not, you know, I should go to back to work. And so um, even just doing it part time. And so as, as a result of that, the one job, this is the truth, the one job that I wanted uh, about three years that I had been putting in an application for. Whatever. After I made the decision, here it comes. Coming to my email. No, that's the message. We would like to interview you. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. You know, and it would have been part time and everything, you know, just had extra money and stuff. And I was yeah. like, so I started wavering, you know, and I thank God for godly counsel from my sisters that said, but didn't you say that God said this? And I was oh. like, and so, you know, because we have a tendency to want to help God out. Yeah. You know, even with, you know, church stuff, if, it, if it's a need, you know, I, I have extra money, I can take care of it. But God wants us to depend on him. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. He wants us to depend on him. And so we cannot waver. When I made the decision and called the lady back, I first set up the point. And then I, I, I said, I, I started really praying about it. And they said, well, you know, you can go ahead and do this. Can you do this? You know, and I was like. You know, I kind of was backstepping. You know, like, you know, like, you can do this too, you know. And so we got to be fully persuaded. And so anyway, I went on and called the lady back. And I said, thank you. But, you know, I kind of prayed about it. Said, oh, okay. And so I said, thank you so much for calling oh. me. And I'm thinking, I've been waiting three years for this job. I you can't know. believe it. Oh. <laughs> so then, anyway, I went on and told her that. But then, you know, I promise you, every Almost every, uh, well, every few days, finances are coming in. Do you think that I could have done a better job by working part time? But it's not me even going online and saying, I think you need a God is speaking to people. And He wants to do the same for you. He wants to do the same. God is a supernatural, spiritual God. 
And if people, you know, keep saying, well, no, he doesn't want to be prosperous. So it's not about Biden. Yes, the world needs finances to function, you know, but, but I'm saying put your dependence upon God because God is our source. The Bible says in Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, when you go home, this is going to be y'all's assignment. And if you would like, um, you know, but if you'd like, go to uh, Matthew 6 and 33 and rehearse that about how God takes care of the birds, the fowls of the air, and that he, you know, clothes the flowers in beautiful array, saying that if you just seek him first, and everything else will be added unto you. We determined last, last week that God cannot lock. So this, this is your instruction book to get everything that you need. Everything that you need is in here. And so God just wants us to make sure that we're putting this word before our eyes and our ears and in our hearts and begin to act on the things that he's showing us. And then we're going to have good success in life. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, Lord, that the people received your word with gladness. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that every need for your people is met with heaven's best, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially. And Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for everything that you are doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that your word has great recompense of reward, Lord God. When we stand on your word, we see the victory. When we stand on your word, we see the increase. We thank you, Lord, that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that through Christ, the word, we can do all things through, I mean, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we thank you, Lord, for this Christ in us, the hope of glory in Jesus' name. We just give you the glory, the honor.